boys are off to go and get another couple of loads of straw whilst they're doing that. I can go through this grass seed drill, empty it all out, make sure it's all clean inside and get ready for tomorrow because hopefully the rain stays off, the grass seed arrives tomorrow and I can quickly get those 10 acres drilled uh, before it rains. And I must be, thing is radiators out I imagine. The straw bell there. We'll just poke her in the shed. That's why I need some air in it as well actually. We're gonna get it, need to adjust a bit. There you go, she's in. Just had to switch which side of the headstock I put her off. So the last time I used this drill, for some reason, I didn't blow it out, which I'm now regretting. And it's been sat outside for most of the winter because we ran out of shed space. So I've now got to blow out all of this, cleared most of it out by hand. And then if that doesn't work, Get the pressure washer out, blast it through, run her up till it all goes through. Hopefully none of them have blocked the pipes. We'll find out and put a bit of seed in. Um, although these pipes are so large and loose that it really shouldn't have blocked it. It's just blocked up in here. So we'll sort that out and that'll be fine. Grass seed being delivered just in time for the rain. Chuck it in the drill, get drilling. Today's we're back grass city delivery has come that's half of it all i'm taking out is 10 bags chucking them in the drill i'm not going to open them i'm just going to chuck them straight in the drill i got my scales underwear my book on how to operate and calibrate this drill because i cannot remember for the life of me um and i was up in an iron i was going to put it on the 6610 because i thought the 6610 has smaller wheel spacings and therefore wouldn't do so much damage to the maze uh, and then I realized it might struggle to lift it. And also I'm ignoring the maze. I'm pretending it's not there because this is why I'm in this situation. I got greedy with the grass and wanted a grass crop. And then we put it in late, the maze in late because we wanted the grass off. And now I'm going to end up doing the same thing. So I need to forget that the maze is there. So I'm putting on the new island um, because I've run it on it before and I actually know what the speed is doing and I can sort of work out what I'm using from there. So I'm gonna grab that, put some seed in, get calibrating it in the field, and off we so go. More exciting news. This is all the barley straw. There's some oat straw there. Doesn't bail very well, the oat straw. They weigh 475 kilos, but they just look like handbags. Um, wheat straw, more oat straw. This is a stack. There's a thousand bales of wheat straw between here and the road and four stacks. And around the corner here, very exciting. What is it? Last load of the year. Kuching. Got it last night. So I've got to unload that and then we're done. So if anyone wants some straw, there's a thousand bales of wheat straw just there that really needs to be gone by Christmas. Um, I keep the top bales for myself for the cattle so I don't have to worry about putting them on a lorry. If anyone wants it, you can have 10 bales, 10 loads, one bale, 100 loads. I don't care, have it. Um, Price is around fifty pound a ton at the minute if you can get it, but you're lucky to get you are lucky to get a lorry to come and pick it up. So, if anyone wants it, give us a shout. Got loads. Also got thousand bales of barley straw um, outside, stacked up in that backyard. I have I have six or seven hundred bales of barley straw in a shed as well. Fifteen hundred bales of wheat straw in a shed, um, and actually we have seven hundred hay bales or eight hundred hay bales. They're all 120 by 90s, seven or 800, I'll find out when we put them on lorries. But got loads of hay in the shed, first and second quality, most of it's first though. Um, so we want a pretty good price for that, but if anyone wants any, shout. I don't care where it goes, we've sold to the Isle of Man before. Um, we've sent some to Wales before and we've gone down to Cornwall before. But I can organise transport or you can organise it and I can just load it. Totally up to you. But if you need any, shout. So I'm out of field, I'm going to drill up to this gap. So all of that bit, sort of here, is all going to get flattened a bit. But it is what it is. I could stop at maybe that gap there. Um, but this needs a 30 metre headland so we can spray off. Because all the main stuff will we'll probably spray, spray off because it has got a bit of fat head in. As you can see, it's 
all wisping plants here. This is the field. It's a job to know what to do, you know, what is the right decision. Leave it and just forage it. Um, or get the grass in this bottom 10 acre bit and accept the loss. I don't think the drill's gonna flatten the grass, that the maze that much, because I've not got wheels or anything. I'm literally just tying, dragging through. So unless I catch a plant and rip it out, it should be stood up at the end of it. I'm not gonna roll it afterwards, but you can see all the ones that are just germinating and green in the bottom. I'll get out and show you. You can see how dry it is out here. I can fit my whole hand in there, easy. At least a foot down, and this was on our six meter margin strip, which is right next to the ditch, the wettest area of the field. Right, this is what we're coming into. For some reason, I don't know why. You can see the maze here has just started germinating. I cannot understand why. Um, well, it's obviously moisture related, but why this area of the field hasn't really germinated, but that top area has. Who knows. Anyway, this is what we're going to drill into. Um, right off, basically up to that line just there, 10 acre bit, all the way up, leave a headland at the end, drill it, forget about it. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. Hopefully the grass will get a good germination. This is going to be a four year lay in here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll either tidy up the maze with the forager if it's dry on the ground condition, because we don't want to make a mess in the grass lay, or October time, I let the cows out here, put an electric fence up, let the cows out here, graze off the maze quickly, which won't take long with you know, 100 cows and stuff the cows, um, and then rally them out of the field straight into the sheds. Here comes the tricky fun part. I can't actually remember what I drilled with this drill, whether it was grass seed or whole crop, because um, I did put in 20 acres of barley through this drill. Spring barley did a terrific job, absolutely awesome job. Um, so I'm going to set it up, try and calibrate it. It's probably already set to whatever I last drilled, which would have been grass at the same rate. Um, but then again, it might be barley, but I'll know straight away as soon as I look at the discs. But we'll just calibrate it just in case. It comes with its own trays here. They just slip into these slots there so you can calibrate straight in the field. Drop them off. Then I take down this coulter bar. It's held in by these clips here. Drop it down and then those trays slide under these above these so that's how it looks trays are in underneath above the coulter bars um, underneath the seed distributors which are these things now all i've got to do empty these bags out i'll just put four in to start with in the four different compartments and then spin it round well then study the book and find out how many times i have to spin it round so this is the book it's blooming old the man before me obviously used to drill wheat barley and oats with it now I need to find where the grass seed, how we set up the grass Study seed. the manual. <clears throat> I'm drilling at a rate of 14 kilos an acre. So I need to put the seed in here, turn this handle 48 times, and then effectively that should put 1.75 kilos into these trays. I weigh it out with my scales over there and we'll see where we're at. These are the gears on here. I've got one to 20. I've not touched them because I think I already had it on grass. So I turn this 48 times now and hopefully the seed will come in. That's 48 times. Empty it into the bag, wear it out, see where we're at. Another thing to do is just check all these piles are roughly the same and that they're coming out where the seed distributor is so those two are next to each other they're the same seem to be the same as that one seem to be the same pile as them this one's one on its own would you say he's the same pile as that and that i'd say so it's all running fine we got ourselves a flap surface the weight block's good enough the old deer's cooking scales are good enough don't tell her she'll be human empty it out see where we're at 1.2 kilos in the first bit and that's 725 kilos. So this is slightly over, which means I'm gonna to have to come down a gear and see where we're at. Third time lucky, first one was 1.1. 1 .1. That's 6.25, so 625, so 1.1 .1 plus 0.625 is 1.725. And what we want is 1.750. Spot on. 
slightly under, but that's all right. That's what we want. I'd rather be under than over. That's that all calibrated, all opened up. Let's get drilling, see how it goes. So I just drilled a little bit. Just gonna have a look at the sea deck. We only want to put it in on the surface. That's very nice there and there. I'm not gonna roll this, so what I will do in a minute is just alter me top link slightly. So it's a bit further in on the front. But that's the seed there. Seems to be coming out. Yes, it's flattening a bit now. I think that's where I'm running with the tractor. Passing through, it seems to be alright find out in a minute, it gets a bit thicker. You see the light now, good maze, bad maze. And this line is basically where we had the grass, this side, not that side. So that's the line I drilled to. As you can see, it's quite a bit more dense here, so I'm not gonna bother running that over. We'll have that as a big headland. I actually drilled the bottom headland down there um, because I had some seed left over in here that I wanted to use up. Yeah, we're pretty much. By the time I turn around and drive back down this strip, that'll be empty. The drilling done. As you can see in the land work, haven't really made too much damage. Sometimes the, it's fallen where the wheels sort of miss the crop completely. But on the headland, a little bit more damage, but it is what it is. So yeah, job done. Fiona done a good job. So I've just had a look at the NAAC, which is the National Average Agricultural Contractors prices. And per acre, this would have cost 25 quid an acre, 25 to 30. I bought this drill for a thousand pounds. Today, I've drilled something like 250 acres with it. So it is paid for itself over and over again. And zero maintenance, really. Yeah, some of these plastic pipes down here they go, but at the same time, with um, grass seed, you don't need perfect seed placement. In fact, a lot of people that I've seen online, um, they don't even bother with these. They just let it, they let it drop out the seed distributor. Don't bother with these, don't bother with the shoes. As you can see, that one there is slightly broken. So this is our six meter stewardship strip. Uh, it's just a grass strip, a buffer strip between the arable crop and the ditch, which is just in there. Um, it's a part of our mid-tier scheme. So in order to have a big concrete grant last year, or two years ago rather, uh, I had to go into the mid-tier scheme on the farm, which meant putting buffer strips in, growing GS4 greening crops, which is the special clover crop I was silaging earlier in the year. Um, but this was, we just left this grass from when this was grass, which was a two year lay. So now I'm quickly just stitching a bit more seed into it, which is a four year seed. And hopefully that should do it justice with a little bit of rain. Just put the drill on its little trailer. And if I've got this first time, I'm going to be so amazed. Let's go out and see. It's all right that side. I cannot tell you how much shunting around this usually takes. Ho <laughs> ho! It's all right that side. Yes, SJ, come on. Drill on the trailer. Trailer hitched up to the tractor. Grassy done. Rain in the background. Off home for some lunch. So finances wise, I bought the seed at about 53 pound a bag. I've done 10 bags. I've done nine bags actually, because I've got one there. So press a bit of drilling cost. Let's say probably a six, 700 pound exercise today grass is in the ground it's going to be in the ground for four years we'll get four cuts of silage or two big cuts of silage and then the rest of the summer grazing from it um, so stack it up against maize maize is a great fattener for cattle but at 80 pound a bag and a bag does one acre for maize plus all the fur and all the work goes into it i am wondering whether we ought to drop maize out of the rotation completely um, especially now we've got more sucker cows if we start finishing the cows properly I have to keep the maize. So I am really thinking about it and weighing up the options, what's best to do, because maize is great, but it is expensive. It's a really good fattener, but it's 
just expensive and it's only one year and like this if you have a disaster we've lost about five grand so you should get that with grass that's the end of today's video thanks for watching if you've enjoyed it like subscribe share it all the feedbacks really positive and does help um, and I don't know what order this is all coming out in because I've spent a couple of weeks making quite a lot of content which is not any time to edit and release it so if this is the first one that comes out for a little while thanks all for putting up with me and sorry about it we've just been really busy if it's the second or third one sorry for spamming you with a load of video updates but I had loads of content I've just got to edit um, anyway see you next time